Coming up on Mountain News at 6, we'll have the latest on an officer-involved shooting in Harlan County during the weekend. And a group of students from one northeastern college come to eastern Kentucky to help finish a new home for a flood survivor. Plus, off and on rain chances will stick around this week. Those details on the way as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Kentucky State Police continue to investigate a weekend officer-involved shooting. It happened in the Teetersville community of Harlan County. The Harlan County coroner pronounced 42-year-old Lance Wayne Bryson dead inside a home on Ohio Street. He was from St. Charles, Virginia. An autopsy was expected to be performed today in Frankfort. It is still not known what is what led to the shooting. State police have released very little information. No other injuries were reported. A death investigation is underway after troopers in Logan County, West Virginia, found two bodies while doing a welfare check. Troopers say when they arrived at the home in the 5000 block of Garrett's Fork Road in Chapmanville, they found the front door open. Inside, they found the bodies of a man and woman, Charles Ray Atkins and Amber Yvonne Atkins. West Virginia State Police are calling the incident isolated and domestic related. Two people are behind bars in Pulaski County after police say they tried to steal items at a dollar store. The incident happened last night after police were notified of the shoplifting incident. They say James New and Robin Bingham were in a car when they hit an employee while the employee was trying to get the license plate number. Police later found them at a home in Nancy. They were taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. A now former Laurel County teacher is facing sexual abuse charges. London police arrested 31-year-old William Trevor Goodson. Police say he was arrested on claims of having an inappropriate relationship with students. According to the Laurel County School District, Goodson was a teacher and worked in the district's athletic department. They say he is no longer an employee. In a statement, Laurel County Superintendent Denise Griebel says the district worked with London police to investigate. Griebel says the safety and well-being of students is their top priority. A Florida woman is being held in the Knox County Detention Center as state police investigate allegations of a large theft. Gail Luazo is facing charges of theft by deception. Police say back in August she sent fake invoices to the McCreary County Board of Education. The invoices appeared to be from a supply company the board had ordered from before and totaled more than $125,000. State police traced the ill-gotten funds to the Florida woman and she was brought here to face charges. An assistant principal at McCreary Central has resigned following an investigation there. The Lexington Herald Leader reports Aaron Anderson resigned last week rather than face termination. KSB and the Cabinet for Health and Family Services are investigating Anderson's conduct. Superintendent Brian Crawford said he could not comment on the nature of the investigation. In January, Anderson was suspended without pay. A Michigan man is facing charges after police in Laurel County say they found more than 100 grams of fentanyl on him. 25-year-old DeAndre Chappell was taken into custody last weekend in London. Police say they found about 104 grams of fentanyl in Chappell's possession. Chapel was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Well, the weather does not get much better than this for early March across the region. On Sunday and on Monday, we were dry under some sunshine. Also, we were warm. Here's a live look as the sun sets on this Monday across the mountains. And as you can see, plenty of blue sky on this Monday evening. Those current readings in the middle to lower 70s up to 72 for Pikeville, also in Clintwood, 73 for Jackson, also in Harlan, and 74 over in Manchester, 76 in Essel County over in Irvine at this hour. So we are tracking some well above average weather on this Monday and be sure to soak up the sunshine because changes are on the way as early as tomorrow. But right now up on first alert pinpoint Doppler, all thanks to high pressure, we are dry, but we are tracking our next weather system. Some showers and storms over Arkansas, Louisiana and Mississippi. Also an area of low pressure close to St. Louis and Missouri. And this weather system is pushing into our direction. So we are watching out for an increase in that moisture as we go into your Tuesday. Also on Wednesday, but tonight if you have those plans, most of us are dry. 
dry. A small chance of a passing shower, but again, most are dry and mild. Lows back in the lower 50s, more 70s on the way tomorrow, but we see some cooler weather by Sunday, also by next Monday. Those details on the way in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Cameron, thank you. It was an emotional day in Boyle County as leaders in Danville came together to honor the memory of the lives lost to COVID-19. The service was held this morning at Constitution Square Park. It included a tree planting ceremony and dedication to the lives lost. The service was especially meaningful to those who had lost several loved ones to the virus. The next thing you know, I called my mother and she said she wasn't feeling too good. So on December the 10th, which was her birthday, 2020, she come up to the hospital, diagnosed with COVID. It was just devastating. Two deaths like that, it just, cause I was still recuperating from COVID too. In addition to the loss of lives, people say COVID-19 led to drastic changes in education, healthcare and productivity. This Wednesday, March 6, March, marks four years since the first COVID case was reported in Kentucky. Investigators say a patient was killed in an ambulance crash during the weekend. It happened on the Mountain Parkway in Clark County. The coroner says 66-year-old Deborah Akers of Elkhorn City was a patient in the ambulance when it hit a guardrail and flipped. The ambulance driver was not seriously hurt, but another EMT remains in critical condition. Floyd Miracle, assistant chief of EMS in Jessamine County, says mistakes can have consequences. And while many EMS agencies work around the clock, Jessamine County has made the switch to 12-hour shifts. As 24-hour shifts are very long, especially if you're working for an EMS agency that is busy. Um, the busier you are, the lower the chances that you'll actually be able to get any rest whatsoever during that 24 hour period. It is a change Miracle says would not have been possible without the county's support. Jessamine County Judge Executive David West says it is an investment that's paid off. As we have seen during the last 19 months after the flood, one of the most vital parts of rebuilding has been the volunteers, folks who have donated their time to help make a difference. And today, WYMT's Olivia Calfee shares the story of a group of students who made their way to Perry County just to do that. A couple hundred Boston College students are scattered across Appalachia this week. And some are working with the Housing Development Alliance, hoping to make a difference in the lives of flood survivors. But everyone's been so vulnerable and um, in sharing those stories and kind of, it adds a whole new layer of meaning to what we're doing and why we're building these houses. The group spent the day at Blue Sky Subdivision in Perry County alongside a finishing crew. HDA's Mindy Miller says seeing groups like this is a necessity as we continue to rebuild. It's still fresh in all of our minds, but when we get a lot of these volunteers who come in, some of them don't even know that we had a flood. So we're having to educate them about that, and then they realize the importance of the work that they're doing. And as volunteer and student JT Mungin and Griner both explain, they are not only making new friendships, but also walking away with a new perspective. A very introspective experience that allows you to kind of reflect on where other people are in the world and how you can come to meet them there. It adds a whole new layer of meaning to what we're doing and why we're building these houses and just how we can like come together with this community and understand what they've gone through um, and just support them and help in any way we can. Making a difference on their spring break while getting a glimpse of the resilience here in the mountains. In Perry County, Olivia Calfi, WYMT Mountain News. Since the July 2022 flood, the Housing Development Alliance staff has helped more than 90 families with plans to build many more homes in the multiple counties it serves. We are tracking some more dry and comfortable weather as we go into this evening, but rain chances are back as early as tomorrow. Your forecast after this break. Plus, I'm watching all the older guys come in here and uh, listen to all speak, starting weight and start getting these big muscles. It's like, man, I want to do that. Coming up next, we begin a three-part series, A Strong People, 
that will introduce us to a pair of the strongest kids in the world.